I wonder if you can think back to the very first lesson we had um, this term, and I introduced to you um, the mathematician, Emmy Neuthal, right? And I said that among many of the things that she did as a mathematician, as a physicist, she introduced this idea of a field. Do you remember what a field uh, was? Um, it's a very strange kind of object, but it was very closely related to this. This is not a field, but it's a closely related idea. What was this? It's a set, right? Can you remember, this, this object is, you have encountered these before. Can you remember, how did we define a set? What is a set? Uh, it's a group of, what did you say? Scores. Okay, so scores, these could be scores. Um, I will point out the idea of a set is much broader than that. So it actually could be a collection, a group of pretty much anything. Um, I'm actually not going to use the word group because group is another mathematical idea. And there's this whole subsection of maths called group theory. So I think collection is a good word to use. So jot this back down because this topic, um, today's concept, is built upon this again in a different way from a field. Right? So a set is just a collection of objects. You can have a finite collection of objects, such as you know, um, Tina, Crystal, Chloe, and Jasmine. There's a finite set of objects. Or you can have an infinite set of objects, dot, dot, dot. This goes forever. So this is the set of all odd numbers, right? Now, we sort of added on extra conditions. And I won't revise it. You can go back to the first weeks if you like. We add extra conditions. If you have a special kind of set, it becomes a field. Well, if you take a set and you add order to it, if you take a set and you add order, what you get is now a sequence. Okay? So 1, 3, 5, and 7 are odd numbers, but 7, 3, 5, and 1 are also odd numbers. And that would be that would constitute the same set. Okay? But a sequence, a sequence. is a set with order. Okay? So when you see sequences, we no longer have the curly braces around them. So I could legitimately say, when we talk about this set here, let's, let's make this finite now. The example I gave you before, this set and this set are the same. Okay? Um, but this sequence, one, three, five, seven is not the same as this sequence, seven, three, five, one. Okay? So does that make sense? When you're looking at sets, you don't care what order they're in, they're just kind of like a pile of numbers or objects or whatever. But when you look at a sequence, like things are sequential, the order in which you give them matters. Okay? Uh, sequences are built off of sets. And series are built off sequences. So a series is what happens when you take a sequence and you just add everything up. That's all you do. So it's not a set with order like a sequence is. A series is the sum of a sequence. Okay. Um, so for example, 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus 7. That's a series. This is a finite series. Just like with sets that can be finite or infinite, you can have finite or infinite sequences, you can have finite or infinite series. So as an example, you could have this. This is a really important one. Okay. So <clears throat> that's another that's a different example. So everything that applies to sets, you can sort of see there's a parallel here, just like finite, infinite, that kind of idea. So how do we define these things? How do we describe, I want this set or that set, or this sequence, this series, etc. Okay. So underneath here, uh, a little subset heading, which is how to define sequences and series. How to define them. There are three ways. If I want to describe for you a sequence or a series, and I want to say it's this one, not that one, it's a particular kind of sequence or series, then there are three ways to do it. The first way is the one that I've already shown you on the board, which is I establish a pattern. Okay? Um, if I list enough terms, you can see, like I don't need to tell you what the rest of these are, what would the next term be? 1 over 16, what would the next one be? 1 over 32. 
and 1064, and so on. So you've got enough terms here to establish a pattern. Establish a pattern. Now, generally speaking, it's agreed that you need three terms in order to do that. Three terms. And I'm going to give you a quick example that shows you why it's three. If I said to you, okay, here's a sequence. One, comma, two, dot, dot, dot. If that's all I gave you, you don't have enough information yet to really know what the next term is. There's lots of different things it could be, but there's two obvious examples that are possible. For instance, see this one here? See this one here? How do you advance from one term to the next? What do you do each time? You add two, right? So it's like plus two, plus two, plus two. There's a common difference between each term. So if I apply that logic here, then what would the next term be? Three, and then four, and then five. So this would become the counting numbers. Do you agree? That's totally plausible. But have a look at this guy down here. To advance from one term to the next, there is not a common difference. You don't add or subtract anything each time. What do you do? You divide by two, or you multiply by a half, right? So here, there was a common difference. That might be worth jotting down. There's a common difference here. Whereas for this series, you don't have a common difference. You have a common, the way we would say it is, a common ratio. So when you've only got two terms, at least for these kinds of different things, I'm going to show you a couple of others in a second, you have no idea what comes next because it could be either of these, right? Oops. This could go one, two, three, dot, dot, dot. Or it could go one, two, four, dot, 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 right? So therefore, you really need the third term to establish the pattern. Obviously, you can provide more than three, but generally speaking, once you have the third, you don't need to provide any additional information. So establish a pattern. You can also define a sequence or series, bless you, with a formula. So the formula is going to give you the nth term. Here's what I mean. I can describe either of these by going straight to a particular term, defining that term, and saying the uh, first term is this, the second term is this, the third term, and then dot, 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 the nth term, whatever that might be. So for example, this one here, I could say the uh, nth term, this is the way we would write it, so t for term, n being a substitute because that's the particular one you're interested in. So that one there would be, let's see here, I guess I would probably state it like this, 2n, sorry, 2n by this one. Do you see how this will give you this series or, or the sequence, okay? I'd say, okay, what's the first term? t1. Uh, well, I'm going to substitute in 1 everywhere I see n. So it'll be 2 minus 1, which is 1. Uh, if I wanted the next term, term 2, it would be 4 minus 1, which is 3. And you can see one of the advantages of this is that you can go immediately to any term that you like. Um, you can go to the 100th term, rather than listing out the first 99 and then you get to the 100th one. The 100th term you can immediately see is going to be 199, 200 minus 1. Okay. So this still defines this series or this sequence. It gives you enough information. And it's a little more concise. OK, there's one last way, uh, which is through what we call a recursion. <laughs> now, a recursion is very similar to this formula idea. But instead of saying, go straight to the nth one, you say, well, just tell me the start and tell me how to keep going. Okay? So for example, again, coming back to this 1357, I could say term 1 is 1, the first term. And then to get to the next term, that's the, my way of saying the next term, you just take your previous term and add 2. That's what you told me before to do, right? To advance, you just add 2 every time. So you know where you start, and then you know how to keep going. So I might even write that. Where do you start? And how do you advance from one term to the next? And then you can define every other term in that way. 
It's called a recursion or a recursive formula because see this part here on the right hand side, the part that makes it work? It sort of refers to itself. It's sort of circular, right? These patterns here, or these ways of describing sequences in series, are much more common sense uh, and they're a lot easier to use. But there are some sequences in series that this is really the only way or the most efficient way to do it. Let me give you a famous example that you all know. One. This is a sequence. What's the name of this sequence? This is the Fibonacci sequence. Um, even though lots of people before Fibonacci discovered it. How would you define this? How would you explain it? Well, um, I've done the pattern. I've established the pattern, okay? But it's far more common to define it in a recursive way. Like that's how you actually get from one number to the next. I just say um, what the first number is. You also need the second number. And then what do you do? How do you get to the next term? Actually, you should say two. You're going to look at the previous one and also the one before that. That makes sense, doesn't it? Like you look at these two to get this, you look at these two to get this, and so on. So again, you can see the recursion in here. It sort of refers to itself. 